some more reactions. And you need to know this because more terrorism is on its way. And this is what people say. You can't call acts of terror Islamic. Every religion has had violence. Even the Christians started the Crusades. Okay? Is there a valid comparison here? Let's go through this briefly. We covered this in the 6,000 Years of History series, but let's just give you a little review. Here's a comparison of the Crusades and the Jihads. What was the motivation? The Crusades were initiated as a defensive measure. The purpose was liberation of the Christians who were oppressed. The motivation of jihad was offensive. It was to conquer people and territory. What was the justification for the Crusades? Well, 0%. 0% of the New Testament is about crusade. How did they justify it? Well, they were looking at their Christian brothers and sisters, and they were fleeing from terror, and they were crying for help. What is the justification of jihad? 24% of the Medina Quran, 67 of the Sirah, which talks about the life of Muhammad, which all Muslims have to copy, and 21% of the Hadith are about jihad. If 21% of your religious text is about waging war on the infidels, that's a lot of justification and incentive and motivation for your followers to go and kill the infidels, don't you think? So the people who are killing people as jihadis, they're acting congruently to their religion. Whereas I cannot say yea or nay to whether these people who started the Crusades, they're not Protestant Christians, I'm a Protestant, they're Catholics, they started the Crusades. Is that justified in the New Testament? I think not. But I think governments have a right to defend. I think governments have a right to wage war to protect their citizens. That's the right of government. But I, as a Christian, I don't go and kill people. And there's no scripture for me to do that in the New Testament. Fair enough? What was the frequency of the Crusades? Well, there were seven Crusades, and some people might argue nine. So you're talking about nine separate Crusades. How many jihads have there been? There are websites that count acts of jihad and they go into the range of tens of thousands. We cannot agree on the number because it's over 10,000. So we'll just say 10,000 plus jihadi battles and terrorist attacks so far. How does that compare to seven crusades? The infamous terrible crusades that people try to compare with jihad. When did the crusades start? Like I said, in 1095 A.D. by Pope Urban II. And jihad started in 632 A.D. by Muhammad himself. Please understand, no crusade was started by Jesus Christ. Jesus did not start a crusade. The apostles Peter did not start a crusade. John did not start a crusade. Paul did not start a crusade. So, 1,100 years later, more than 1,000 years after Jesus, one pope from one denomination of the whole Christian world, the Catholics, started a defensive war called the Crusades, 1095 A.D. But the jihad was started by the founder of Islam, it is a core tenet. In fact, it's one of the five pillars of Islam. When did these acts of violence end? Well, the Crusades ended, did you know, in 1291 A.D. That's it. That's the last of the Crusades. We've never had any more Crusades. And we're not starting anyone anymore. I know of no Christian denomination in the world currently calling for a crusade. Do you know? No. Absolutely none. So when did jihad end? Can you tell me when did it end? No, it's never ended. And it will never end until Jesus comes back to defeat the Antichrist. And that's what people don't understand. The 
duration of the Crusades versus Jihad, the Crusades lasted less than 200 years. But Jihad has been ongoing for 1,400 years and not stopped. Is it a valid comparison when people say, oh, you know, every religion has violence? And don't you think that the Buddhists don't have violence? I am considered an expert in Buddhism. I wrote a book about it. And I can tell you there's plenty of Buddhist violence starting from the beginning of Buddhism. King Asoka, who's one of the most famous Buddhists, was a murderer. And no Buddhist denies that. And the Buddhists killed many people in Sri Lanka. And the Buddhists will bomb mosques in Myanmar. And very violent. So every religion has some. But are you going to compare the violence that's isolated? Really, it's more political in Sri Lanka, Myanmar. It starts and it stops and it's isolated. You're going to compare that to something like jihad. There's no comparison. The casualty of crusades, maximum 150,000 on both sides. 150,000, keep that in mind. Christians and non-Christians die. Jihad has claimed the lives of 60 million Christians. 80 million Hindus, 10 million Buddhists, and 120, 000, 120 million Africans. These are casualties, murders. We're not counting how many millions of girls raped, given as child brides in marriage. Girls circumcised by their Muslim fathers. We're not counting all those acts of violence. We're just counting straight-up murder. And it goes into the hundreds of millions. And people say, oh, what about the crusade? What about the crusade? There's no comparison. And the response to all this? Well, all Protestants, all Bible believers, denounce and reject the crusades. We didn't instigate it. Sorry our name gets caught up and mixed up with it. But no Protestant instigated it. In fact, Protestants were also victims of much of the Inquisition started by the Catholics. But the good thing about the Catholics is they have also repented from the Crusades. They're not starting anymore. And I think, you know, they're aligning themselves more and more to many of the fundamental doctrines that we agree with. What the Bible says. And what even their, you know, their first pope, really, if they want to claim, uh, uh, they can't really claim Peter because Peter wasn't even the pastor of Jerusalem. James was. But one of the disciples of Peter was Clement. And Clement is considered one of the first popes. And if you read Clement's writings, if he's really a Catholic pope, he talked about salvation by grace through faith. So we actually agree on those things. Thank God. And we now... No Christian that I know uh, agrees with, you know, the Crusades or wants to start a crusade. But what about jihad? When somebody blows himself up, when a Palestinian stabs an innocent person, a bystander, a civilian, at a bus stop or rams a person with a car, what do the Muslim authorities say? There's no repentance. There's no apology. In fact, there's no condemnation. And in surveys, this was a Pew survey, they found, depending on which country, but as an average, over 70% of Muslims agree with Sharia law, which means they agree with jihad. Over 70%. In some countries, it's more than 80%. And people say, oh, that's just a minority. Well, last time I did math, 70% is majority. 80% would be overwhelming majority. That if given a chance to establish Sharia law in Australia, 80% of Muslims in some countries say yes, and they're coming to our country. 
some more reactions. People say, it's not a Muslim terrorist. It's a poor person with psychological problems. Well, Osama bin Laden was rich and well-educated. So how do you explain that? And how do you explain all the poor Christians who lived for ages and ages in the Middle East and they never blew themselves up because of poverty? It doesn't make any sense. People say those things, but if you're educated, you don't believe that. That is really propaganda. Jihadi John, who thanked God he was killed this week, he was the guy that executed journalists and at least uh, one Christian that we know, the Japanese journalist. He was the one that took the little knife and beheaded people on YouTube. Jihadi John has gone to uh, hell and found out there are no 70 virgins waiting for him. And we thank God for that. Well, was he a poor, uneducated person? Jihadi John graduated with honors from the University of Westminster with a degree of Bachelor of Science. He studied information system and business management. This does not fit at all the propaganda that's being given, that the West is responsible because they're poor and they just can't help it. No, it is based on their theology. In fact, jihadists are acting rationally. They don't think they're crazy, and really they're not. They're acting rationally based on their understanding of the Quran, 67% of the Sirah, and 21% of the Hadith. How about this reaction? We heard this before, but they didn't say it this time. They say, it's only a lone wolf. Just a tiny minority. It's just one aberration, one crazy person. Well, no, it's not. There have been thousands of jihadis, jihadists before. There were eight jihadists neutralized today. And there will be millions of jihadists in line tomorrow. It's not going to stop until Jesus returns. 